I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of the sink separation that's taking place on this Magnavox chassis. I've got the uh, scope hooked up to the sink separator. The picture's working, by the way. It's synced up nicely. I'm going to the pin 2 and pin 3 of the sink separator, which is a... Let me look at what it says here on the tube. 6EB8. It's actually a dual tube, sink separator and a video amp, but I'm just looking at the triode part right now. I'm on pin 2, which is grid, and 3, which is plate. You can, these little ghosts here, you can kind of, I can tune those out a little better. So basically what, what we have here is, at the horizontal rate, I'm seeing each scan line, which includes video information here, and then a, um, a, a, a sync pulse here. This is the grid, this is the plate. Notice how flat this is, it's completely cutting out the video information, or at least it seems to be. Let me just turn that off, and we'll recenter this up. And I really try to get it. You can see a tiny little bit of video getting through. Right here. But you can see, I mean, this is at uh, half a volt settings. So let me go back to, that's one volt settings. So I believe this thing's been, I'll probably check the calibration, but you get some idea of the difference of the sync pulse compared to the tiny little bit of video that's still eking its way through. Anyway, that's a sync separator in action. I'm going to next do a look at the, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to get rid of all this little nastiness in here. Um, I'm next going to look at the vertical multivibrator tube, which is where Sam shows a picture of what it should look like with the brightness turned down and the vertical tube pull, just so you can see what's actually getting through the integrator. And when I do that, I'll switch this over to the, uh, the vertical rate, which is probably going to be right about there. Anyway, I'll come back to that in just a minute. Okay, here we have the input to the grid of the vertical multivibrator. Pin 1, I believe it is with the tube pulled and the brightness all the way down so we don't end up burning a line into the uh, CRT. And what we do is this is what should be it should be seen. Now this is calibrated to have basically one volt per segment here. Granicule, I think they call it. One, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven. And I think it said eight on the SAMs. This stuff here is not video. If it was, you'd see it moving. What this is, is the unintegrated horizontal pulses. So in other words, what happens is the sync separator has horizontal pulses at the end of each video line. And then when it gets to the end of the, uh, end of the frame, it puts a series of pulses closely together. And what happens is the integrator sees that series of pulses closely spaced and they add up, essentially. Let's see if I can split this out. This is the, well, here we go, Let's see if I can get this better. This is the horizontal pulses far, not that are spaced pretty far apart. They hit the integrator and they start charging up a capacitor and it doesn't have a chance to discharge and it makes one strong vertical pulse. So anyway, that's what you should be seeing. You see this is not video, these are horizontal pulses. There's no variation in them whatsoever. They're just the unintegrated horizontal that occurs between each line of video information. Anyway, that's what you get. I'm reducing it back to the uh, vertical rate. Let's see if I can get this thing to lock in a little better. No, I had it going better a minute ago. Oh, i got to bring this in. Here we go. There you go. So what we're going to do now is...
take a few readings of the sink separator voltages. I'm doing this for uh, another member on, on YouTube who is having some problems with the same chassis. Hopefully he can uh, duplicate what I'm doing here and try to isolate his problem. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get the, uh, the multimeter out and I'm going to check the voltages in and around the sink separator. Uh, that'll be done with no signal because that's the way that Sam says it when you're using the uh, the multimeters you don't want to have a signal with a scope you do because you have to see the information anymore more in a minute here I am on the plate lead of the sink separator my multimeter pin 3 56 volts this is with no channel this is actually with the tuner cocked between channels that's really important you want no signal getting through because that will definitely affect these readings and this is what you're trying to check make sure that plate lead is at around 60 this is 56 that's pretty close I'm going to see if I can get on pin 2 which I think according to Sands is supposed to be minus 1 volt I don't know if I'll be able to do that with all these hands let me see hang on yeah here we go This comes out. That's about as good as I can get. Minus one volt on one volt on pin two. Anyway, that's important for the sink separator work. You have to have those voltages, otherwise it's not going to work right. And you got to make sure you got a good clean composite signal. That's what the AGC is all about. Uh, do that before you start changing caps, because you know you can change all the caps in the world over here in the vertical sweep section. It's not going to do a darn bit of good if your problem's over here. And if you do have hash on the AGC, you've got to check this cap right here. That's the filter cap that takes the hash out. That's all for now. Thanks.